Alright, kiddos, we are starting our last chapter of this book. This is uh, chapter 6. Uh, just FYI, I want to make sure you got a, a aware and a little uh, notice here that your last test will be May 5th, and then we'll get ready for the final. Um, your review for your final is on your, has already been uh, uploaded by HCC on your Connect Math, so you could actually go to that review if you really wanted to. All right, so chapter six is matrices um, and using matrices and some other things. Um, we only do section six one, six three, and six five in chapter six. Now matrices, some of y'all have done matrices before. Some of you haven't done a whole lot, and some of the some of you that have done work uh, in matrices, you use the calculator, and you're not supposed to be using the calculator here. So we're going to be going over a couple things. Um, those of you in honors algebra 2, you did some of this stuff before. Those of you in advanced, you didn't do a whole lot of it. So you may be learning some stuff today. So we're going to be talking about um, matrix. Okay, augmented matrix is just a rectangular array of numbers. In other words, it's got a form of rectangle. Okay, a square. Okay, and this would be known as a square matrix. Okay, and this is just a regular matrix. Okay. Um, we're going to be talking about sizes later and that kind of thing. So it's a square matrix because it makes the shape of a square. Okay. Um, it says a matrix can be used to represent linear a system of linear equations as long as they come from standard form. And we're going to use those coefficients. This is what you used it in Algebra 2. And some of you had to use, you had to make the matrix. And so that should not be the tough part. It's that if I'm going to make the matrix if it's a two by two it's going to be a square matrix right and so what we did is we take the coefficients of the fronts and they have to be in order three negative one and if it's missing one like notice here it's zero x so that's a zero and a five and then the back ends ten and twelve simple as that okay now if I wanted to do it to this one, I've got to I've got to actually move things around. I've got to distribute 2x plus 3x plus 3y is equal to 1. Uh, this is a 14 over here. This will be 6x minus 6y. These two will make 5x. So that would give me the matrix. There's only two of them, so that can only be a square uh, or a 2 by 2. 5, 3, 1. 6, negative 6, and 14. Now, what happens if there are three letters? Then I need to have a bigger matrix. I need to have x, whoops, that's not x, x, y, and z. They're missing one. That one's missing the y. This one's missing, these two got a flip, missing the z. So 2, 1, and 0. Missing the x. It's got a y, negative 1, and 1. It's got to be in the right order. And then negative 1, 5, and 3. And there I have my augmented matrix. Okay? The augmented matrix comes from the equation. Okay? Um, and we can go the other direction with that. Okay? We can take the augmented matrix and write the linear uh, system of equations from it. This would be x, y, z. This would be x and y. So I'd have x is equal to negative 3, I would have y is equal to 0 0.05, and here I'd have z is equal to 12. If I take this one here, I'd have negative 8 plus 7y, negative 8x plus 7y is equal to 113, and then I'd have 2x, there's no y, is equal to 1 third. And we're done. Okay, so that's just making your matrix. All right, so being able to do row operations, okay, which means I can, there's a couple ways I can do row operations. One, I can interchange the rows. In other words, these rows are this way. Columns are this way, okay? So I can interchange rows. In other words, if this is row one, this is row two, 
I can switch, and this this little symbol means switch R, row one and R two together. And if I do that, that just means the bottom row comes to the top, the top row goes to the bottom. Simple as that. Okay. I can multiply a row by a non-zero constant. Can it not be a zero? Okay. So in this one, what this is saying is we're going to multiply three times row one and we're going to just keep it at row 1. Okay, So the only thing that's going to change is row 1. So row 2 stays the same. Row 1, everything here gets multiplied by 3. 9, 6, negative 15. Okay. Now, I can also multiply one row to another row and then add it, or add it add a multiple one row to another. So all this says is here. We're going to take 2 times R1, then add it to R2, and replace it to R2. Which means, in essence, R1 is going to stay the same when we're done. No change. Okay. But what this says is we're going to multiply 2 times R1. So that's going to be 6, 4, negative 10 okay, and then we're going to add it to R2 R2 is 1, negative 2, and 10 we're going to add them 7, 2, and 0 and that's now going to become R2 7, 2, and 0 okay so those are all your operations now there are, I believe there's some videos uh, that can you can also see on your book Okay, for your text. All right, so let's try a couple. First, we need to know what this reads. This says, take one half and times it to R1, and your result goes into R1. That's going to go here. These are multiple steps, so we're going to do one half times R1. So we take R1, multiply it by half. So that's going to give me negative 1, 2, and 5, and it's going to go into R1 negative 1, 2, and 5. Now, we didn't say anything about 2, so we're going to leave it as 2. Leave 2 alone. Now, here, here's my finish. This says we're going to take R1 and add it to R2. So we're going to take R1 and add it to R2. So it's going to be 0, 7, and 8. Okay, well, what do I do with it? I put it back in R2. So it goes in R2. Now, the blank here means that whatever this row was stays the same. So that row will stay the same. And we're done. Okay, so you just got to follow your steps. All right, so look at 7. In 7, we have negative R3. So... And then we're going to add it to R2. Alright, so negative R3. So we're going to do a negative 1 through R3. So it would be negative 2, negative 1, negative 7, 0. And we're going to add it to R2. 2, negative 8, 4, negative 18. So it's going to be 0, negative 9, negative 3, negative 18. Now where is that going to go? It goes into R2. 0, negative 9, negative 3, negative 18. So that's what the rule told me to do. So everything else stays the same. So the first row stays the same. The last row stays the same. And that step is done. So now we're going to take this answer and do these steps with it. This says to multiply R2 by negative 1 half, a uh, ninth. Just R2. So negative 1 ninth is 0. 1, 1 third, 2. And where is it going to go? The R2. So I put it where it tells me to put it. 0, 1, 1 third, 2. Everything else then stays the same. 12, 0, negative 6, 3, 2, 1, 7, 0. And I've completed what it asked me to do. Okay? Alright, so that's going to lead us to what's called 
the Gaussian elimination and the Gauss-Jordan elimination. Okay. Now, one of the things that's taught in Algebra 2 is what's known as the Gauss-Jordan. It's actually the Gauss-Jordan elimination, or Ben Ice tends to call it the Gaussian elimination. Um, this is not exactly the right terminology, but um, so what we want to do is we want to get an augmented matrix in what's known as for Gaussian elimination, we want to get a what's known as rho echelon. Rho echelon has an augmented um, matrix that ends up with ones in a diagonal and zeros in front of every one. Okay, this also would qualify. Everywhere we see a one, we have a zero in front. Okay, and as long as this is a row of zeros, that's okay. This is what's known as row echelon. Okay, what in Fort Ben ISD does, they teach you to get your final step thing in what's known as reduced row echelon form, which is one's diagonal and zeros everywhere else. Okay. And that's in its proper reduced row echelon. Okay. So this is something we're going to be trying to get to. Okay. We can also solve by just getting things into row echelon. Okay. So, we're going to do this, okay? We're going to start with just Gaussian elimination, which means I want my final answer to be ones down the middle and zeros there, okay? As long as we get that, we can actually finish solving the problem. So, first things first, we got to get the augmented matrix, which means this is 3x plus 3, and the 5's got to come over, so this is going to be 3x minus 5y is equal to 1. Okay, so my augmented matrix is going to be a 2 by 2, 2, 3, 7, 3, negative 5, 1. And so what we have to do is we've got to get it into this one. Okay. And you can't multiply by zero, and you can only use your operations. So the first key is how can I get this to be a one? Now there's really no help anywhere here to where I can get things um, moving around, so I might as well just go ahead and get this one. So first step, let's go ahead and take one half times r1 and put it into R1. That'll be 1, 3 halves, 7 halves. Everything else stay the same. Okay, now there's multiple ways you can do this. You could flip these rows and multiply everything by a third. Six of one half dozen of the other. Okay, so now I need to get this to be a zero. The only way we can get things to be a zero is by addition. So what we want to do is we're going to multiply this. This is a key. This one is very helpful. I can multiply it times anything I need it to be. So if I wanted to add to 3 to make it a 0, I need a negative 3. So we're going to do negative 3 times R1 and add it to R2 and put it back into R2. Which means row 1 will stay the same after I'm done. So I'm multiplying R1 by negative 3, 3, and negative 9 halves, negative 21 halves, and we're going to add it to this. That'll give me a 0. This will give me negative 19 over 2, and this, 2 over 2, would be negative 19 over 2. So that's going to give me 0, negative. 19 over 2 
negative 19 over 2. Okay, so notice I've gotten the first column done and the row we want here and here, so I've gotten that first column done. Yay! So I need to make this now a 1. Well, that's actually going to be fairly easy because all I have to do is take R2 and multiply it by negative 2 nineteenths. And we're going to put it back into R2. So that'll make it. One, three, I didn't do anything wrong. One. Okay, so when I multiply that by negative 2, that's going to give me 0, 1, and 1. Now, it is technically in row echelon. Okay, so in Gaussian elimination, I don't have to do anything else with the matrix because what I now know is right here that y is 1. And if I know y is 1, I can go find x by plugging it back in the original. 2x plus 3 times 1 is equal to 7. 2x is equal to 4. But x is 2. So my solution to this is 2, 1. And that is the intersection using Gaussian elimination. Okay? Alright, so I didn't have to get this one like 0 like in Fort Bend. That will be our next step, basically. Okay? So, let's look at a bigger one. Okay? So here's a bigger matrix because there's three variables. Now again, always helpful. Move things around. So, I'm trying to do this and see if we can fit it all in. Let's take row 1 and switch it with row 2. And I can actually switch it with row 3 if I wanted to. Now why did I do that? I did that so that I get a 1 up here. That's a 0 and this is a 7. Sorry, didn't do that right. Alright, why do I do that? Because I wanted to get this 1 here. That's key. Because what am I trying to get? I'm trying to get 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. That's my goal. Now I can use addition, subtraction, all those other things. Okay? So, let's get, try and make this a 2, or a 0. I'm going to make that a 0, which means I'm going to multiply row 1 by negative 2, add it to row 2, and put it back into row 2. Which means row 1 will stay the same. Row 3 will stay the same. Okay, so we're going to go negative 2, negative 4, uh, negative 2, 0, and add it to this one. To 7, I don't know why I keep losing that 7. 0, negative 10, negative 3, and 7. So that becomes my new row. 0, negative 10, negative 3, negative 7. Okay. Now we're gonna take this. We gotta start. We're gonna start a new row here. So what are we gonna do with this? We're gonna take. So we gotta get this to be a zero. So let's just do negative one times row one plus row three and put it back into row three. Which means. Row 3 is the one that's going to change, so it's going to be negative 1, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 4, negative 2, negative 3, 0, 2, negative 3, negative 3, 0, 2, negative 3, negative 3. Okay? So, hopefully so far, we're good to go. Okay? something. There we go. Alright, so now we need to get one of these two to be a one right here. Okay? Um, many ways we can do it. Okay? I'm just going to go ahead and switch the two rows. I don't know why. 
this and see if it works. 2, negative 3, negative 3. And then this will be 0, negative 10, negative 3, negative 7. And now I'm going to multiply this by a half. Row 2. 1, 2, 1, 0. So it will be 0, negative 10, negative 3, negative 7. Okay, we're going to try and get to this to be a half. It will be 0, 1, negative 3 halves, negative 3 halves. Okay? Alright, so this is where it starts getting a little tricky because now I need to get this guy here to be a 0. Once I can get this to be a 0 and then that to be a 1, we're going to be done. So if I can get that to be a 0, which means multiply 10 times row 2 and add it to row 3 and put it back into row 3. Alright, so this would be 0, 10 negative 30 halves negative 30 halves which is actually 15 I'm going to add it to this this would be 0 0 and that's negative 15 which would be a negative 18 negative 15 and 3 or negative 15 and 7 would be what? Negative 22? Which would be 0, 0, negative 18, negative 22. Okay. So, put this in here. We'll make sure we haven't made a mistake. It's easy enough to make mistakes. Bring this up here. Okay. Alright, so I thought something was looking really fishy, so I don't want to have to redo this whole tape, so I made a little bit of an error. Can we go back and see this? Okay, if you look here, I don't know why I put a negative 2, but it should have been a positive 2, so that positive 2 should go through. Okay, and also for some reason I gave this 7 a negative when I shouldn't have given this, should have stayed as a positive. Okay, so that positive 7 here, positive 7 here, that makes that a positive 1 there. This would be a 1 half. This right here would be a 7. And then when I multiply this by 10, the step's still good. You're going to end up with 0, 0, 2, negative 8 here at the bottom. Which, sorry about that. Okay, so you can go back and make those switches. And you can pause for a second and make this. You can just look here and kind of go back and see where those at. That's why I highlighted them. So this last step, we're going to multiply by one half to R3. We're going to leave it in R3. 1, 2, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1 half, negative 3 halves. And this would become 0, 0, 1, negative 4. Okay, now I've got it in the row echelon which means z is negative 4. Okay, so if z is negative 4, I can go back in different places. Okay, so you can actually take this value and then take it, put it into this equation, which would be y plus 1 half z is equal to negative 3 halves. Okay which if I put four, negative 4 in there, this will make it y minus 2 is equal to negative 3 halves, and I'm going to add 2 to both sides, which gives me y is 1 half. Okay? Then, you can actually put those two into any of these questions up here, 
x plus 2 times 1 half plus negative 4 is equal to 0. That's going to be a 1. So if that's 1, that's x minus 3 is equal to 0. x is 3, which gives me the final answer. 3 is x, y is 1 half, and z is negative 4. So this takes pretty long. So what I'm going to do is to finish up these notes, we're going to stop there and we're going to continue this on the next set of notes.